once again uh, thank you all very much uh, for your uh, very uh, uh, insightful uh, speeches and presentations uh, very helpful um, so uh, maybe we'll begin with a couple of uh, questions uh, very again once again very glad to see that uh, there was a lot of collaboration uh, that i believe got initiated at this tia uh, previous tia summit uh, i think dr marcus both you and Naveen, you talked about um, you know, some collaborations uh, starting there. So maybe we'll start with the, uh, the two of you first. Um, could you maybe share your thoughts in terms of what more could we do um, as an industry or between the academia and the industry or peer-to-peer -peer kind of a collaboration? So in general, do you have any thoughts uh, for the industry and for the audience here in terms of more collaboration? What, what can we do more? Yeah, so I think, uh, first of all, I think this has been a, a fantastic forum, uh, the TIA forum, like I was mentioning earlier. Uh, some, of the, some of the discussions that we started off at the TIA summit actually culminated in uh, not only doing the hackathon, but also harvesting a solution out of it, a waste management solution out of it, that now we are looking at engaging with uh, other stakeholders, including governmental agencies and some of that. Um, I think... Uh, I think these forums uh, have a great role to play uh, in, in how we sort of bring all of this together. Um, and I think we can maybe look at going a step further and sort of having some kind of a, uh, maybe a, a, a ongoing sort of a, a discussion around some of these topics, whether it's related to waste management, uh, sustainability. I think we should have some kind of a working group um, that can continue sort of bringing in various stakeholders, whether it's startups, uh, whether it's government agencies, whether it is the academia, whether it is uh, the corporate uh, corporates, I think if we can have some working groups around uh, some of these topics, uh, I think that would be one way to sort of not only uh, do it as a one-time kind of a forum where we come together and ideate and you know sort of uh, all this uh, magic begins to happen, but also I think uh, have an ongoing sort of a discussion and dialogue uh, through these work groups is what what I would think uh, maybe one way of looking at. Very good thoughts, uh, Naveen. Thank you. Dr. Marcus, you have any thoughts to share in terms of what... Uh, any thoughts to share in terms of what we can do better in terms of uh, maybe industry, academia, collaboration, or maybe peer-to-peer -peer collaboration? Any thoughts in general? So, um, yeah, definitely. I mean, um, here, if we, for example, at Hoof University, we are a university of applied science. So for us, it's very important that we have, uh, like... We are doing research projects um, based on the newest technology, but um, it's only um, it only makes sense if we can share this with the industry and if you can collaborate with the industry and try new things, try like, to develop new best practices. Because, to be honest, there are many new technologies. Let's I mean AI is a good example. So everyone is talking about AI, but if you ask. Like who's who's using AI in a, in a like daily business? Then you will not find too many um, people who say like yes, this is like what we what we um, use in our daily business. So there is a lot um, there are a lot of things to develop, and the technologies are existing. We don't need like at the moment we don't need newer technologies just to develop the business further. So we we just one one task is to implement the technologies that are existing and bring them into best practices, bring them also into an easy use. Because what will it help if we have a like project that takes one year, two years, three years, and then after three years when we implemented it, we um, realize, oh, now we need something new. And so that's why I think a collaboration between academia and the industry is, is very good in a way that you can um, bring these both views together. And also, I mean, um, especially like um, also between India and, and Germany or like um, throughout the globe, uh, it's, it's very important because there are like different um, like mindsets uh, and bring together and also like this project that we have, it's an international project kind of. And it's very good you know, because we have uh, we bring the like best um, things like from all the mindsets into this project, and that makes it successful. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you very much for highlighting the aspect on uh, international uh, co cooperation and collaboration. Thank you. 
Um, so uh, just switching gears a little bit, uh, Colin and Srini, a uh, question for you perhaps. You, you spoke a lot on digital transformation and how it could apply to sustainability. And Colin, you spoke about technologies in general. Um, so just wanted your thoughts in terms of uh, what are some of the, maybe the statutory and the regulatory challenges that you as um, like an organizations or associations may have faced, or alternately, if there are any thoughts that you wish to provide in terms of what we could do more in, in these areas to, to help with the better advancement of uh, technology. So maybe Colin, we'll start with you. One of the biggest problems, I think, is, is around um, uh, privacy and uh, encryption and this um, constant battle between people's individual privacy and uh, governments overlooking. And that, that seems to be two sides of the same coin. Um, and there's uh, always seems to be a battle around um, who's going to win that leg 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 legislation at any particular time. And it, it causes paralyzation uh, in many industries. Um, and so I think we saw that actually bear out uh, uh, numerous times actually when I was uh, hearing like, um, we're, we're monitoring traffic systems today um, and we're using all your phones. Like, well, okay, do, do I know that? Um, is, is that sort of, should that be legis legislated against? Should we think about that? Should we even have a discussion about that? I think we probably should. Um, and because of those sort of things, uh, you have, uh, uh, and you know, we, we heard from yourself about uh, like factories um, have to be able to be networked, right? And that means they have to be networked to the internet. And the internet's a big, scary thing. And because they have to be networked to be able to use Beckon and use all that other good stuff and become in, in, you know, in, in, industrialized in 4.0, uh, that needs to be cryptographically safe, which needs, which needs to be safe, right? And safe means cryptographically safe. And that's the other edge of the coin. Like you can't have it both ways. You can't be private and, uh, and you know be you know, be break cryptography just because uh, you know, we 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 want to you know, stop bad guys using cryptography. Uh, it paralyzes industry because then they can't be safe. They can't connect their factories because cryptography is broken. And I know it's a very technical point, but cryptography can be used for good or evil, right? And there's nothing we can do about that. But we can, uh, we can use cryptography, keep it safe, continue to keep everybody safe, uh, and enable uh, industry to be able to do things because they know it's safe and they know, not, you know bad things are not going to happen when they connect their factories to the internet. So I know it's a longer answer than you probably wanted, but it's, it, I really do want to have that discussion, uh, in particular in India, in particular in the UK, and in Germany, I know it's a, an ongoing discussion, um, but cri keep cryptography uh, safe and secure for privacy, but also for the, all of these other things we want. And sure, you, people can do bad things with cryptography. People can do bad things with weapons. People still have weapons. So. Thank you. Thank you, Colin. Um, very interesting points and very valid points in terms of uh, data privacy and data security. Srini, any thoughts to share on that? Yeah, I mean, Sham, more than the hurdles, I would say this is an era where uh, organizations like us have to proactively collaborate with regulators to define these things. Because I don't know if you are following the LLMs and Gen AI trend. So a couple of months back, Elon Musk was asking, hey guys, stop development and AI for a few months because we don't have guardrails. So more than hurdles, I would say, Sham, how industry could come pretty closer to the regulatories. So for example, the EU AI Act, which is coming out. So as Bosch, we work pretty closely with the regulatories to see what it means, how do we be responsible, and how it makes sense, and the right way of implementing this thing. So for me, the call for all of us is, let's work closely with the regulators so that we can put the technology into the right and probably in an ethical, integral use mode. Yeah, that's how it works. Makes sense. I think the industries have to take a lead on that front. So I'm glad you're doing that. Thank you. Marcus, a uh, question for you finally. Um, you spoke a lot about um, you know, uh, sustainability and different maybe like you know, building uh, designs and so on and so forth. 
Uh, of course, you had a, a humor aspect to your presentation, but I think you were still making some very valid points in terms of going back to maybe some of the traditional designs and such. Companies more on a consulting and an advisory uh, kind of a, um, path. So just uh, want to understand from you, uh, when, when you go to typically your clients uh, with these kinds of solutions, which are a little bit more common sense kind of solutions, what has been the general reaction uh, from the customer base or are they truly uh, enamored by some of the more uh, modern uh, techniques or the technologies and do they hesitate to incorporate some of these some very basic and traditional approaches that you may have suggested? Any thoughts there, any experiences that you may have had? Things I don't think they are they are less sophisticated what we suggest. So I mean, uh, and that's the way you have to, to 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 sell it also. And I don't want to limit everything on 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 some basic architectural features. I think sustainability and that's uh, is a little bit of uh, uh, my key takeaway from this whole uh, from the whole day today is uh, the co collaborative effort, and that's also what we try to to promote. And I think uh, this is also how we need to work together between, um, let's say, uh, I found, it very, found the, 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 the presentation of the Swiss consulate uh, very, very insightful. And this is exactly what we also try to tell uh, or what we try to promote is that uh, as a small country like Switzerland, uh, if you change anything in your country, this has zero impact on sustainability on anything. It has sustainability on your own people because the uh, cities, if you have less uh, cars on the road, they become more livelier or more, more attractive. But on the overall global scale, it has zero impact. But where Switzerland, as a developed, as a rich country, as a technical advanced country, uh, can play a role is in R&D, in development, in innovation, which then can be rolled out on a global scale. So if you look at it, for instance, um, now we see this is fantasy, and it is a little bit of fantasy, but they are, apart from some big government initiatives like the ETR in France, there are some 15 startups, global startups, they are a little bit bigger than your normal startup, who work on, on, on fusion technology. And that's mainly in the US, uh, but also some in, in Europe, some in China as well. Now that's a technology, I mean, again, that might take 20, 30 years until it's really commercially uh, usable. But for a country like India, who has net zero 2070, maybe it's then available. Then all the plans that we have now are immaculate anyway, because we have abundance of, of energy. So that's, uh, that's I think, what, what you, I mean, one thing is on some big visions, uh, because uh, development, uh, human development is not linear. It always comes in, 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 in steps and phases. Would we sit here, would we have a discussion like this 100 years ago? And I would have told you, ah, in, in 100 years we have 7 point something billion people on the planet. Everybody says it's not possible. There will be wars, civil wars. People will die of hunger. It's not happening. So again, the, 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 the history of human race is adapt adaption. And adoption comes with innovation. And that's, I think, yeah. a key takeaway from the whole day we should take home. Thank you, Marcus. Uh, very passionate thoughts on that particular topic. Uh, I know the, the monitor here is showing time up. So we'll do just a quick uh, uh, rapid fire round, and then uh, we, we'll end it. Uh, maybe from each one of you, maybe a, a phrase or two phrases or a sentence or a word uh, in, in terms of any advice, in terms of uh, guidance, or any word of caution to uh, many of the startup companies that we have here. It could be on anything. So we'll start with I you, I think Shini. for me, I think collaboration is the key. So that's what I quote, Lanya. Yeah. yeah, since it's for startups, I think, and the innovation and collaboration, I think uh, a lot of innovation will happen from the startup ecosystem. And that's why they will play a crucial role in tackling the challenges ahead. Thank you. <laughs> Do it anyway. Do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> sort of the Nike way. <laughs> yeah, so I can um, just add on this, like try new things. And I think um, whenever you um, don't try it, you will not know if it will work. Yeah, perfect. I just say stretch your boundaries. Uh, I think there's a lot of agility and innovation that's possible now with all the technologies that have come in. So test the boundaries, stretch your limits. Excellent. Well, wonderful uh, positivity and uh, great thoughts from each one of you.